G'day, welcome back. It's Damned here and we're going to continue our rule set creation video series. We're going to get into the meat of the character sheet just now. And to do that I'm going to create a new graphic. You can see here it's basically just the square box that we've used before but there's this angled box in here and that's because we're going to have two numbers on this uh, particular section. So we'll just go and have a look at the sample character sheet and see why. When we look at these sheets, we can see that we've got skill, stamina, luck, magic, and magic points. But we've also got a uh, a base value, a maximum or initial value, and also our current value. And uh, the current value will decrease over time, and it'll go up and down. But during the course of an adventure, it'll go down, and occasionally uh, it'll get reset. And at the end of the adventure, it'll get reset. Uh, but we need to know what the initial or maximum value is. So we want to have two fields. And obviously on the paper sheet there's a fair bit of space that you can cross out and write lots of new numbers. We don't need to do that on the computer screen. So what I've done is I've created a car sheet main and that's the window class that's going to appear in this section. So at the end of last session uh, we were creating the car sheet and we created this sub window uh, with the name main and uh, in car sheet main, we'll see that car, uh, so sub window main uh, will can hold the class car sheet main. So sub window main will hold a class car sheet main. And that's what we've got here. So we've got a sub window main, and it's going to hold a window, which is one of these, a window class called car sheet main. So what I've done is um, I've got five elements and they're basically all the same. So we've got an icon and it's called it's using the icon stat, bo stat box. It is a bit of a cheat way to uh, do some um, more complex layouts or fancier layouts uh, without having to design new um, templates for each of the elements on here. So with a stat box uh, we've named it skill icon and we've set the size uh, here which is basically the same size as the image and uh, we've positioned five of them here, so this is uh, one set, so it's uh, a, an icon, a label, a current number, and a max number. So we can see here, we've got the icon, the label, the current number, and the max number. So let's have a look at those in turn as well. So our label, uh, simply got a text value here, we'll also set the font, and uh, for simplicity we're just using the header font from that's defined for the Core RPG reference manual. Uh, we give it the name, skill label, so you can see we've grouped them all together. So we've got skill, icon label, current and max. Then we've got stamina, icon label, current, max. Luck, icon label, current, max. So we've repeated that, kept the naming consistent, and we've grouped them together. Uh, the grouping is not just a visual grouping, but it's also a positioning on the character sheet or on the uh, code so that these occur in that order. All right, so our label is pretty straightforward. The next one is our rollable value, and that's the current value. So at the moment, I've just stuck a default value in here. We've got to work out what the default value, the right default value will be, but we'll dive into that later. Again, we're going to use the large font reference H, and down here we've got some rollable code. So we're going to use dice roll string 2d6 plus self. Okay and self is in the uh, squiggly brackets and that means it'll use the value that's in the current in the field itself so 2d6 plus self means and we're in this field so it means 2d6 plus the value that's in its own field you can write uh, instead of self you could name the field you could put in the squiggly brackets skill underscore current or if it was referencing something else you'd put that name in there role description at the moment is just going to say skill or skill roll, uh, skill check, something like that. And we want it to pull data from the modifier stack and we want it to reset the modifier stack. That's it, nice and easy. And then the last one is skill max. <coughs> and that is just a reference field, so skill max. And we've also changed this to no key edit. So we don't want this to accidentally change. So no key edit means that you've got to do the control and scroll wheel to get it to change. Um, you can't just click in it and type a number. Okay, uh, nice and simple. All right, so we've 
made this and then I've duplicated these I've relabeled them all moved them all over and let's publish it reload our rule set and we can see here we've got skill a rollable value a default value and we can double click on this and we roll wow 18 max roll so we've got six plus uh, double six so uh, that's going to be pretty hard to beat uh, that attack roll and you can see that this graphic differs slightly from what's displaying in the rule set wizard and that's just because I updated the graphic uh, once I got started so I created the graphic uh, in uh, GIMP that looked like this and then once I put it out there I realized that it needed some framing so what I did uh, in GIMP is I put this uh, circle pretty much in the middle of the sheet and um, when I position the numbers they actually sit inside this and it just frames it makes it a little bit more easier to see the rollable value uh, in the character sheet. We also get the um, rolling icon here. You can see that Magic Points doesn't have a rolling icon and in fact Stamina also shouldn't have a roll icon. So let's quickly remove that one. Okay, so our Stamina, we click here, scroll down to the bottom, we get rid of rollable, get rid of the description, we change that to nothing and nothing this will update and I think we also just appended the word check and magic check just keeping them consistent let's uh, push that switch to fantasy grounds and reload and yeah we can see our stamina is no longer rollable double click on that all day long doesn't roll but skill will roll luck will roll and magic will roll all right that's it for this session so we've uh, just created a new icon we've set it at the back we've used that to frame all our elements um, it just gives us a little bit um, more physical visual control of the elements uh, without a lot of messing around with templates and we've laid our elements on top and then I've duplicated it five times um, to basically replicate that same functionality. All right, I'll see you uh, tomorrow for the next session.